All of you doing well. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, How are you, Dhananjay? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, I am the host for today's event, sir. I'm oh, sorry. okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Dhananjay. Yes, sir. So, you have set everything up? Uh, yes, sir. I have set everything up. Like, we are waiting for the guest, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think guest, uh, one minute. I am just talking. Okay, sir. So Dhanan, Dhanan, just look at it. I think the whole, the, the 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 speaker is trying to join. Can you accept the invite? Uh, just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Yeah, he is going to do it. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, I think he has done it. So Dhanan, Dhanan, just look at it. I think the whole the the. Uh, the speaker is trying to join. Can oh, you accept sorry. the invite? Uh, just a minute, sir. His just name sir. is Suman Dara. Can sir, you just check it? So just a minute. I mean, in fact, whoever is uh, asking yeah, you to allow, you can it. allow them. It's fine. Okay, Only sir. those yeah, known contact are worth the link. So, Dhanan, Dhanan, just look at it. I think the whole... The, the, uh, One minute, Suman. Uh, the speaker is trying to join. Can you accept the invite? Uh, yes, sir. I guess he has joined, sir. Um, it's fine. Okay, Only yes, those yeah, no contact are worth the link. So, just look at it. I think the whole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Soren, thank you. I, I think Suman, yes, finally you are in. Yes, sir. I think, yeah. So, we are all set. Okay, sir. So, we shall start round. So, good evening, yeah. everyone. Uh, I am Dhananjay Singh, yes, a nice. final year undergraduate yes, student nice. and a member of CS. Yeah. So on the behalf of Civil Engineering Society IIT Hyderabad, I welcome you all. So Team CS is pleased to present you all with the industrial seminar on analysis and design of elevated metro structures to be delivered by our alumnus, Engineer Suman Dhala. So let me uh, give a brief about the uh, about our chief guest. So Engineer Suman Dhara has pursued his graduation from Usmania University and post graduation in structural engineering from IIT So initially he worked in Jacobs on Middle East bridge projects and currently working in Midas at IIT Mumbai. So overall he has seven plus years of extensive technical consulting experience for bridges and building projects. He enjoys providing solutions to engineers on sophisticated projects, which range from bridge engineering, building engineering, and spatial mechanics problem. So this was a brief introduction about our guest. Uh, I will, on the behalf of CS, I would like to thank Dr. Professor uh, Dr. Surendranath Sumala, who is associate professor in structural engineering, for organizing this seminar. And uh, I would like to welcome HOD of our department, Professor S. Surya Prakash. Uh, sir, I request you to say a few words on this. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dhananjay. I think uh, I really appreciate all your efforts in coordinating the Civil Engineering Society activities. And today, it's in fact, it is a special day 
because uh, we are joined by one of our own alumni. In fact, uh, Suman did uh, his master's thesis with me, and uh, it looked like it happened yesterday, but actually it has happened, you know, almost five six years ago. He has graduated and he has joined the corporate world in the last five years. I think he has been doing very well. And Miras is one of the very popular companies. Uh, those who are in bridge engineering community, we always use Miras software for design. And just like in buildings, we have uh, you know CSC softwares like you know ETAP Safe. For bridges, it's actually Miras. So I'm really really delighted to have Suman here with us. And uh, just like many of you who are in the final year undergraduate, and most of you are uh, M Tech and PhD students, uh, you know. You can interact with Suman and uh, you know listen to him about his experiences, how it is in the corporate world, and you know how was his job, how was his job experience so far? Because he's in a quick span. In fact, he has worked on many prestigious projects uh, that are there around the world. You know, it is uh, really you know very very heartening to see. So, with these few words, and I welcome once again uh, Suman. Uh, really pleasure to have you here, Suman. I think with this, I think the floor is yours. You know, you can take about 50 minutes for your uh, uh, presentation and uh, followed by 10 minutes of interaction. Suman, so you can start sharing your screen and get going. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the kind introduction. It's good to see you here, sir. And uh, thanks, Dhananjay, for the kind introduction. So I have, I'll share the screen. First of all. Yeah, can you all uh, see the screen? Yes, yes, we are able to see it and it is also, uh, we are able to hear you well, Suman. Good, yeah. All right. So, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm glad to present to my uh, own college students. Uh, it's a pleasure for me. And uh, you're all always welcome, as Sir has said, to interact with me. At the end of the presentation, I'll send you my email address. Or <clears throat> you can join me in LinkedIn and you can have a chat. So today, uh, what uh, the topic that I'm going to present is analysis and design of elevated metro structures. So can I know the audience pool, sir, here, the PhD students, you have master students and the undergraduate? Yeah, mostly MTech and PhD students, uh, Suman, and maybe undergraduate students, maybe very few, but I think, you know, they would also be very familiar with the uh, design aspects. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, all right. So this would be elevated metro structures. Mostly I'll focus on that. So all of you are in Haiti, Hyderabad, you have, you must have seen our Hyderabad metro rail. So that was constructed uh, that was constructed by lnt and the design primarily was done there are like five stretches one stretch was done by jacobs which was uh, uh, chtm hill is the company which has done the design and it was been acquired by jacobs so i was a part of it, uh, it at the ending phase of the design i was there uh, in, in the design process so i'll show you a few glimpses and i'll also establish the flow how do you do the design of the metro elevated viaduct? So this would be the contents of my presentation. First, introduction, load calculation, model analysis, and then design. Before that, about quick introduction of my company. So it's, it's Midas is a worldwide software company. So we have this branch offices. So I'm from, I'm here situated at Mumbai. So our headquarters is in Seoul, Korea. So we provide softwares in this building, civil, geotechnical, and mechanical. So it's a world leading company in engineering design software. So it's popularly known, as Sir has said, that uh, in the bridge community, it's popularly known. It's the primary software that's used for the bridge design and also for geotechnical high end analysis. So these are some of the companies which day in, day out use our product, like Arup. Ecom, Jacobs, which is there in Hyderabad, uh, Parsons, Becca, all these companies. This is a very partial list, but these are very big consultants who use our softwares. 
All right. So I uh, I always um, uh, wanted to start with this for the students because in faculty development or in student uh, interaction programs, we start with this slide. Basically, just to establish what we are doing in the industry because whatever you are learning is, is theoretical concepts in the college. But you have a hands-on on the, uh, on the software as well, but not on the real-time real -time project, real-time project. So basic idea boils down to one slide if you look at it, it's, it's a, if you see a big picture. So you have any structure, suppose cable stay or silo or any bridge or any building or any structure. Basically, uh, you have this excitation coming on. That excitation can be loads, vibration settlements, thermal changes or any type of input that is coming to the structure. So as a designer, as a structural engineer or a geotechnical engineer or as a civil engineer, basically we try to design this beforehand and then go ahead for the construction. So for this input excitation, we have to find this response. So how this structure going to behave, how it going to respond. So that responses may basically includes displacements, strains, stresses and stress resultants. Stress resultants are nothing but yeah, bending moment shear force, which are the major uh, resultants, which we use for the design. So we are all after this response. We give this excitation and then find the response. So how do you do that? So uh, with the advent of FEM, finite element method, people started building the numerical models. So once they build the numerical models using a software, you build a structural model. Basically, it is almost close to the reality. How you want your structure to, to be in reality, the same thing you replicate in the software. Okay. So once you replicate, suppose you have a cable strip bridge, you replicate uh, in the software. Maybe you will use Midas Civil as a software and prepare a structural model. Then you apply these excitations as input loads and then you run a FEM analysis. The FEM solver would be there. That solver, what it does is it takes the loads. It You have the structural model which has the stiffness F equal to K into X. So F by K gives you the response. So you have the force input, you have the stiffness built in, then you get the responses. Once you get the responses, you can use the design principles, design code philosophy, and then design the structure. That's the entire flow of what we do in an engineering design firm. So we simply do two things here. Simplify the structure to a simple structural model, and then simplifying the analysis by using FEM. All right, so if you see the next um, uh, is the software aspect. Midas Civil is our flagship bridge engineering software. What have, it's, uh, most of the people have used STAD, I guess, in, the, in your college days. Uh, currently, you might be using Abacus or ANSYS. Okay, exactly same like that. You have Midas Civil, so it's a software. Uh, this software is mostly customized for bridge engineering. So you have conventional bridges like culverts, you can design them, you can first what you what you have to do is you have to follow these three steps. First is your modeling, second is your analysis, third is your design. So you can model culverts, frame, slab bridges, precast, spliced girder bridges, integral bridges. Integral bridges means where you have the superstructure and substructure integral, integrated. So you do not have any expansion joints here. And then you have the steel plate girders. So you have the steel girders which are running. Okay. So here you have the girders as PSC, which is your pre-stressed concrete girders. Here you have, you'll have the steel girders. This is more popular in uh, West, in US. Even in India, you, you can find these bridges. But most, prob pro most probably you would find this in, in your flyovers, in, in cities. You can find this precast bridges precast girder bridges. They have steel box girder bridges. These are mostly in Kolkata region. You will find this type of steel box girders which are used in the flyovers. Yeah. Coming to the long span bridges. So these are conventional bridges because these have the span length less. Something around like 30 meters or 
50 meters max. But when you go to more span lengths, like when you have a water body or you have obstruction, so you have to go for a longer span bridges. So those longer span bridges require a different type of construction methodology altogether. So based on construction methodology, you have different type of bridges that we categorize in it. So that is one is your balance cantilever method bridge. So what happens is you build it left side and the right side without taking the formwork help from the ground. Okay. So there is a special cranes that are built, which are called as Derrick cranes. So they move along. They move along in this fashion, left and right. Why do you go left and right simultaneously is because you have to balance the movement on the pier. If you go left continuously, then you will have a lot of movement on the pier. So left one segment, right one segment, left second segment, right second segment. That's how you go and construct the entire bridge. That's why it's called balance cantilever bridge. Second is your incremental bridge. So if you have a uh, steep valley or something like that, you do not have the access to the form work and those things and you can't cast the concrete as well. So what happens is we cast the concrete aside, the entire bridge segment, I mean the unit wise for a particular length suppose like 10 or 20 meters and then we attach it to a launching nose. This is a steel nose. We place it on the pier and start pushing it. Just push it with the uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the cranes. Uh, we push it onto the piers. So that's why it's called incremental launching method. So we push it in increments, say one meter, one meter, one meter, one meter. So, uh, so each time the structural configuration changes for the bridge. Okay, that's incremental launching method. Then you have movable scaffolding where the scaffolding moves. Then you have this precast segmental, as all of you might have seen the Hyderabad Metro construction. You, this was the method. So all the precast segments are there. They'll bring the precast segments. They erect using this launching girder. They put it in place, and then you do the pre-stressing, and then they they'll keep this in the keep this on the piers. That's your precast segmental method. So in this presentation, we'll briefly go into this precast segmental method bridge construction of a metro, metro wide it, and uh, full staging. This is not fill. This is full staging method. So you, full staging is nothing but a regular construction of the bridge where you take the formwork from the ground. Now this seg stage segmental bridges, it requires a detailed construction stay analysis because each stage has to be safe and serviceable. Each stage should be uh, designed properly. So you have to use a specialized software for this. That's your Midas Civil. Next is this long span bridges. So once you cross uh, a 80 or 100 meters after that you have uh, very long spans maybe maybe a river which is a, which is almost like 150 or 200 meters wide you so you want to bridge up you want to build a bridge so that time you can go you have to go for this kind of options like cable strip bridge or extra dose bridge or if you are going for a very longer spans then we prefer suspension bridge so the longest suspension bridge of the world is Akashi Kaiku Bridge, which is in Japan. Uh, it's somewhere around 1.2 kilometers or somewhere, I, I guess. So, so, so you, you imagine one kilometer of the main span. So, so you have to uh, have a specialized analysis for designing the suspension bridges because these are very flexible bridges. So you have a lot of large displacement coming into picture. And also this extra dose bridges is, uh, is nothing but a type of cable strip bridge. We'll go more in, we'll not go into details of extra dose bridge, but you can Google it up, we'll get the data. It's, it's a cross between the normal girder, PSC girder bridge and the cable strip bridge. All right, so overall, I can say that uh, Midas Civil is being used for all these type of bridges. So these are the bridges which is being designed. So these are all the project applications, Chennai Metro. So these are all the real models. Yeah, I'll quickly skip this. Let's come to the topic of the presentation. One is your Metro connectivity in India. 
so left side uh, this is the list of indian cities that are, that currently have metro connectivity okay and right side uh, as many as like 15 cities in india have over 500 kilometers of metro lines under different stages of implementation so these are all the cities so these are some pictures so long uh, elevated viaducts provide seamless connectivity so they they create additional movement area without damaging the existing ground level transport network so the, there are some segmental construction so you have balanced cantilever construction here so these are called as viaducts okay and uh, you have a dedicated track for the metro most of you this is this is i think this is from hyderabad metro and this is from delhi metro so this is one balance country when this is segmented bridge segmental construction uh unlike road bridges the riding quality of metros comes from the continuity of the track okay hence most of the metro viaducts comprise of simply supported superstructures except at certain locations where you you need a continuous uh superstructure most of the superstructures are simply supported because you have uh, that's very easy to analyze very easy to design and also to construct simply supported bridges and because of the uh, because of the climatic conditions of india you have lot of ex lot of thermal stresses that would be built up if you have a continuous structure so rather than designing for that you can keep the structure as simply supported and then you can go for longer lengths as a viaduct so you can see here there is an expansion joint so this span this span are not connected so there is no force transfer between that because of the expansion joint that makes the design a lot is lot easier see the construction methodologies of our metro how they are constructed first is one segmental construction so where we use the precast segment segments with the use of launching header we can also have a balance cantilever construction it's it would be a continuous bridge so balance cantilever way of erection is used you can go for precast segments in the balance cantilever construction process or you can use a cast in situ segments the others yeah launching incremental launching as i told you the wide the superstructure can be cast separately and then can be pushed onto the substructures to erect the bridge that's been done in some parts of the delhi metro okay and then the full staging if if you have uh, the formwork ready then you can obviously go for the full staging method just take the supports from the ground and then cast the concrete and the superstructure is ready so what we'll see here is uh, this one span this been almost the same as our delhi metro or hyderabad metro uh, what as a designers we picked is as a 30 meter length a typical span what we do is we fix the uh, span as 30 meters and then we continuously uh, uh erect the superstructures uh with the 30 meter till uh, till how much length you want maybe 15 kilometers of metro you have 30 meters keep on going until unless the foundation is feasible so here we have designed isolated foundation so hyderabad has rock so you have isolated foundation that is feasible so you cannot go for you don't need for pile foundations but if some if uh, if in some circumstances you have um the soil that is not suitable then you might be changing the foundation and hence uh the substructure can be changed and but the superstructure gets fixed so we we design as a 30 meter superstructure and then we repeat the same uh, construction process same design same reinforcement same pattern throughout the 15 kilometers of the metro so this is the main uh uh two span simply supported longitudinal section detail of the bridge so this is 2 meters isolated foundation then you have a pedestal this is your pier column this is your pier cap this is your seismic arrester 
then you have a pairing then you have the superstructure which is your box ESC box section and then there would be an expansion joint in between so selecting the sections if you look at the superstructure so uh, superstructure means whatever the part of the bridge which is above these bearings above these bearings the part of the bridge is called superstructure below the bearings whatever the part whatever the components are there these are called as substructure as a whole so in the superstructure you have different sections middle section support section diaphragm section why you change these sections it's because your bending moment changes in simply supported you have wl square by 8 which is at the middle so you will have this section you know by experience that this middle section is sufficient but at the diaphragm location why you have a thick section is because the shear force is more at the supports for a simply supported bridge for a udl so that's why we have to change this to provide a uh, to uh, to to flow to efficiently design the superstructure basically such that whatever the forces are coming you are not over designing the superstructure nor you are under designing so you are striking a balance so that's why we change this cross sections so if you look at the longitudinal section it's the diaphragm section exactly about the uh, bearings you have a very thicker section with a small opening then you have the support section till 3.1 meter then you have a tapered section so why we are tapering it it's because we want to save the save the material the superstructure concrete material you, you only want th that type of, uh, that sectional dimensions which are necessary to resist the forces and then you have the mid section So main construction activities, how are you going to construct this? So basically, uh, before the design, you need to have those construction activities fixed in mind for the segmental construction. Because we wanted to simulate this in the software and also we have to design each construction stage, even the temporary construction stages. Okay. So first is the precast segment. First. You have the precast segments which are cast, the casting, the precast segment with reinforcement. All different segments as per the drawing are cast. And then you have the substructure which are foundation, pier and pier cap are erected on the site. So this is done in the precast plant. Then you have the substructure which is done on the site. After the after the foundation you have the pier or pier cap erection. Then you have the erection of the segments. So launching girder would be kept in place and then you have the truck that comes uh, from the side uh, from the precast plant to the side then you have the lifting of the segments one by one so you keep it in place and then you do that gluing so you stick uh, um, temporarily and then do a temporary pre-stressing once that is done then you do a post tensioning strand installation bearing plates and wedges at the ends and then you do the jacking jacking of this post tensioning then you can do a grouting because you wanted to use the bonded tendons and then finishing where we cast the seismic arrestors, crash barriers and other works like the other rail works you start laying the track and those stuff so precast plant on the side substructure then you lift it launching gutter is in place you keep it, you do the temporary pre-stressing, then the post-tensioning, the real post-tensioning, and then you move ahead. Okay, let's see how we do the design first, because before telling the you know, to the contractor, or before uh, arriving at the drawings, or before uh, telling the precast, uh, plan to prepare this type of sections we have to design it so as a designer we have fixed that 30 meters is our span length and some preliminary dimensions where we start with okay so let me open the software so this is our software which is my civil okay i'll click on new project 
So here you have, this is the user interface. This is the tree menu. This is another tab windows where you have the loads, boundaries, properties. So you use all these features. So all these features to prepare your structural model. Okay. I'll show you one quick video. That I'll Just a moment. Yeah, I think it started with the properties. So basically, what we start uh, in the software is you have the properties, you have the material properties first. So you define this material properties, add, and then you can directly select concrete. So you have this database which is your code. I'll select Indian standard and M30 suppose or M45 as we are doing pre-stressing so we have to have a higher grade so we can select M50 okay so these are the properties which are taken from the code so you directly have those so you add that material property then in the section you add a section so in the section we have many type of sections so we have to select PSC then you have one cell so you give all these inputs then you would have a section property so once those are done we can start the modeling so here you have this material properties then you have the section properties so the section properties would be something like this so we have this mid section so you can see here I have given all these dimensions. So, so I have to freeze one particular type of section. So we generally, uh, this comes from the experience, we generally use uh, this type of PSC box. So we have this sectional dimensions, mid section, diaphragm sections, as I've shown you on the PPT. The same sections I've uh, created in the software. And then you have this modeling started. So can you listen to the voice of the video? No, no very, very, it is very feeble. Very feeble. Okay, I'll explain you. Yeah. Once you have created the uh, material properties and the section properties, you can go to create notes and then you can create one note. Mind you, uh, we are only here to in the software to create only line model. We generally prefer line model because uh, it's easy to design. Then you and also you get stress resultants directly, like the bending moment and shear force. If you are making a three D model, then you have lot of uh, elements, lot of nodes. The computational power should be more. It's not like you can you cannot design uh, with the three D model. You can do that, but it's tedious. And 1D model is sufficient for us. It's almost like uh, you can say 98% accurate with the 3D full finite element ma uh, model. When you do not have the complexities or a geometrical complexities, like you have a long curvature or you have the stress concentration areas that are built. Only if the stress concentration areas are there, then we go for 3D model. So this superstructure was designed uh, by a 1D model by preparing a 1D model, the longitudinal design. Whereas to be on a safer side, what we do is we do an additional 3D modeling in another software, something like Midas FE or Abacus or ANSYS we use. Then we build a 3D finite element model where we use 3D elements and then we check the stresses, whether they are in the limits or not. Okay, that confirms our design. But initially, the pre-stressing, the reinforcement, everything would be designed uh, based on a analysis results of a line model. So we are here to see the preparation of the line model. So I'll create a node. So line model has nodes and beam elements. So I'll select the grade. I'll select the section footing and my footing dimension is something like 2 meters, suppose. Select it, click apply. 
So here it shows as a 3D. A lot of uh, students get confused when they see this. This is a line model, basically. It's a line finite element model. But the section is graphically shown. It doesn't mean that you have prepared a 3D model, 3D geometric model. So you are just doing a line model. Then you use the same command, start uh, building the line elements, you already had the sections, so you know the dimensions. So this is 6.5 meter length of peer, ca uh, peer column. So as I, you, you can just drag and drop the sections. To the selected elements it would be assigned you have the peer cap tapering this is reverse so so you can change this uh, dimensions it's got reversed so change them so this is your peer cap so so peer cap top small cell portion where we have peer cap top yeah. then we'll create seismic arrestor so these are all element a simple line element that I've drawn with different sections assigned. Next you start with the superstructure line elements. So 30 into 2. So 30 meters 2 times. Sorry. Uh, should be to at the rate. So you see, created the substructure. So, then we'll start modeling the superstructure. So there are commands here in the software like translate, extrude, those commands. Like you have to give the distance, use these commands, then create your line elements. So here we have some 25 mm expansion joint, so we provide some load additionally. Then okay. So this is your first note, then you start the extrude. Yeah. So one small portion of a cantilever slab from section see the diaphragm section so this is one diaphragm section 
So basically line elements. You're just creating line elements. So you know these distances. How did you arrive at these distances? No, at the first instance, we do not know these distances. How much length you have to keep the diaphragm, how much length you have to keep the midsection. This comes from uh, iterations. So first you assume some distance, then run the model, get the analysis results, then you check till which distance uh, based on the analysis results. You find out at how, uh, the distances of the midsection, diaphragm section, support section. So, so I have assumed some distance, thereby I keep on creating this line elements for this superstructure. So phi at the rate 3 means those are here phi times 3 meter length segments. So in this fashion you keep on creating the superstructure. Once you arrive uh, at the full um, superstructure including the substructure. So this completes the modeling. So this is how you prepare a model. So I'll quickly go, go back to the real model because in the short span uh, you are new to the software I cannot explain you all these features so I thought of just giving you a very uh, basic overview of how this metro viaducts are designed. So once you prepare this line models so basically these are nothing but your line beam elements and then you have the sections that are assigned. So this button uh, shows you all the sections that are assigned. So it's not a 3D model, it's a one d model. And once these are done, what we do is we create the boundary conditions. So these are the boundary conditions, fixed supports. We know the soil, uh, we assume it as fixed supports below the isolated footing. Then we create the elastic links. So these bearings which are there, these bearings would be created, um, simulated using the elastic links this tables if you go you have the stiffnesses that are there so these stiffnesses are your bearing stiffnesses so you are simulating this bearing with this elastic link it's nothing but a spring which has some stiffnesses in those directions bearing has stiffnesses in x and y i mean in the law in the longitude and the transverse direction so we arrange those bearings as that we wanted to reduce the forces on the superstructure and the substructure so those things you can manipulate here using these springs, okay? And then we have this rigid links, which we say, where we connect the bearings. These are your bearings. And then bearing top to the superstructure. So that is the establishment of the boundary conditions. And you have the low flow path, the flow of loads. Once you have the load applied on the su superstructure elements, they transfer from the rigid link to the bearing top. So we have this elastic links and the elastic links take the forces. Then they are attached, they are uh, uh, connected to the substructure using rigid links again. And then from the bearing bottom to the pier top, the pier cap top, you have the pier cap then you have the pure column, then the pedestal, then the isolated footing, till the fixable. So that is your load path for the spreadsheet. So in the software, once you provide this boundary conditions, you have this defined supports, you have elastic links, rigid links, you use these features to, tell, to create uh, this boundary conditions. And after that, you have the loads. So here you have many loads here, like static loads, dynamic loads, settlement, temperature, construction, moving load, all these loads are there. For this bridge, we uh, 
uh, are designing this bridge for metro loads, primarily for live loads. So those live loads, you have to run a moving load analysis. So moving load analysis means uh, it's the application of the loads through a specified path where this load is moving with an increment. So that is called moving load analysis. Rest all the loads you can apply it as static loads. The codes that you will be using are the IRS codes, which are Indian Railway Standard codes, uh, which are uh, given by the Metro Authority. So you use those codes, calculate all these loads, like your dead load, you know already. You have this wind load, which are coming from the IRS or IS 875. Then you have the braking, derailment, all these loads, which you apply it as static loads onto this line elements. Okay. For the Metro load, you have a, a moving load analysis that we have to do that we'll discuss. So that's for the modeling aspect. I'll quickly go back to the presentation and show you the construction process of this bridge. First uh, is the direction of the first pan. So launching girder basically it, it, it is applied onto the superstructure. Suppose the launching girder weight is 6000 kN. So this is your launching girder. So this is your distribution of the weight. Just for an example, you have a middle and rear supports, middle and rear supports. This is your first stage. Then the position of position change of the middle and rear support happens. So you see there is a change. So again, there would be a telescopic leg active phase. So this is how they transfer. They bring this uh, uh, this ropes together to a particular position and then left it. So before that, they have to prepare for the launching. So in that process, there would be a load change. So that also we have to take care. Then there is a change of loads at the middle and rear support. This moves ahead. Then there is a change of loads. Then the launching girder of the second step. Then you lift it each one by one. You do the temporary pre-stressing and the glue part. And then you do, after that you do the post-tensioning and then you keep it on the substructures. Then you go ahead for the next part. So the loads to be considered in this project is the dead loads first, self weight of the bridge and superimposed loads. How do you calculate the superimposed loads? How do you know that? So you don't need to worry, you have to blindly follow the code or the codal guidelines and the metro authority. So they'll tell you what are the super, uh, what are all the live loads, metro loads, what would be the braking force, what so those calculations are all there. Superimposed loads, you know the wearing, uh, the wearing course thickness, you know the density, you'll get the superimposed loads. Live load, you have the metro train loads that would be given by the authority. So you can calculate the curvature, longitudinal force. Temperature loads, that would be given in the code, how much temperature you have to apply. So there would be a seasonal variation and also a day variation. So that is your temperature loads. Then you have wind loads, like the longitudinal direction, the transverse direction. Those wind loads, we'll apply them as static loads. Then you have the earthquake loads, like longitudinal direction, transverse direction, vertical direction. Based on the seismic zone, you have the code, which you can use and then uh, uh, arrive at the earthquake loads and apply it onto your model. And the other loads for metro, uh, metro bridges, metro viaducts, generally are derailment loads. If a train derails, the load position would change. So that, those are called derailment loads. Long welded rails, when the track is long, long welded, uh, continuous welded rail, that would generate additional forces. Nosing forces, forces on parapets, differential settlement can occur of the substructures. The foundations can settle. So those also have to be considered. Then you have vehicle collision as well, which is uh, like if a, if a car collides to the pier. So those conditions also you have to uh, apply on the model. Once you apply to the model which we have created, you will create the load combinations. That is from your IRS code, Indian Railway Standard code from the clause. And you have the ULS and SLS, ultimate limit state and the service limit state. 
these combinations you prepare, you combine all these loads together with the relevant load factor, then you'll arrive at some particular number of ULS loads and further SLS loads. Then you perform the design in the software. I'll just show you the design part. So before that, this is the metroloid that we have used. It's 200 kilonewton, so it's two meters. So there are change in axle. So each axle has 200 kilonewton force, which is acting. And uh, you have two meters, 12 meters, two meter distance, 2.5 meters. So this would be one unit. Like that, you have three units. So in the software, what you do is you go and create this user defined load as a metro load. In the software, you select the standard, you have the metro train load, then whatever uh, uh, is the one unit, uh, the metro one unit loading with the spacing, you create it. Once the vehicle is created, you can go to the moving load, you have created the vehicle, you can create a traffic line lane. So this is your first track. This is your first track. This is your first track. And then you have the second track. So two track. One is forward and backward. And then you have the vehicle. Then you define a moving load case. So I'll tell the program that these are my dedicated lanes. And this vehicle, user defined vehicle, has to move on it. So the program will run a influence line uh, analysis kind of moving load analysis and then it will give you the worst, uh, worst I mean the maximum and the minimum uh, for results like the bending moment, shear forces, displacements, all those stuff. And the best part here is you can uh, always inquire um, about the loading pattern which is creating the worst uh, result. Suppose you are getting a bending moment here at 5000 kN. Suppose I will show you that. Uh, if you are getting any bending moment here which is maximum, you can inquire about which loading position it is creating that maximum moment. So that features are also there. Okay, we will go to the results part now. It's a quite extensive model in fact. I'm trying to summarize the uh, entire process here. So, and also if you want a response spectrum analysis, you can do a response spectrum analysis as well. Or you can apply it as a static uh, seismic coefficient method. You can use and apply it as a loads. But we, uh, that depends on the coding guidelines. We generally do a response spectrum analysis rather and we'll not go for the time stay analysis because this is a Hyderabad Metro project. So, and we have uh, uh, we have the uh, the seismic zone as two or three here. Okay, so once you have applied the loading, then you could uh, you can go to the analysis, perform analysis. Once you perform analysis, you can go to the results. Then you can go to the reactions, dead load, click apply. and display the links so these are your reactions for dead load case okay then you have uh, any other loading case suppose for live loads you can see the reactions okay then you have the deformations for live loads so these are your exaggerated deformations so it's only 0 0.011 meter around 10 mm so you can change the units here it's around 10 mm for the live loads then you can go to the forces beam diagrams as we are using line elements we can go select the MY bending click apply so this is your simply supported bending moment for which we will be designing so it should be kilometer meter so it's this 
and you can go to the moving load tracer you can go to this uh, beam force and moments select the element click apply so this is your vehicle position which is causing that maximum bending at that particular location so you can backtrace which loading position it and is causing the maximum or minimum effects so that's for the result part this is how you check you can go to the stresses check the stresses once you get uh, individual uh, results for all these load cases you have to combine it using load combination as I've shown you so we prepare this kind of load combinations where we pull all the all these load cases and combine it as per the code guidelines for the load combination preparation then we'll use this ULS and SLS for the design so you here you have the post tensioning also so in the post tensioning we provide the profiles so profiles we provide so these profiles have to be how do you calculate the eccentricity a lot of people ask us uh, how do you uh, arrive at this eccentricity there's no uh, uh, direct answer for this I mean it depends on the loading so it depends on your de dead load and your permanent loads so for, for, for starting you have to run an analysis freeze your sections and then you have to um, you have to manipulate this tendon profile coordinates okay such that everything is under limits and it's not over designed so you can so you can increase the number of stands you can decrease them you can increase the forces you can change the eccentricity all these parameters are that this design parameters so you can do a optimization of this tendon profiles and the sections together to arrive at a perfect design which is very efficient that's your yeah, load combinations your design everything is done then you go for the PSC tab here you select the code you select the parameters here like I want the ultimate limit state design ultimate bending resistance shear resistance torsion resistance these are all as per IRS so there are calculations once you get the analysis results you use that and the design you you'll arrive at the capacities now the bending resistance, the resistance, shear resistance. Then you compare it with your analysis bending demands, bending moment demand, shear demand, torsional demand. So those checks, those calculations have to be done as per the code. So serviceability checks, the stresses should be under permissible limits at various stages, at construction stage, at service loads, all these parameters are given as per the code. So those are all inbuilt in the program. You can select the design position, which position you can have to select and just hit perform design. Once the design is performed, you can click on the Excel report. This generates a full fledged Excel report from the software. Kind of this Excel report. So this element, this is 10th element in the model. You have the ultimate moment positive moment you see this bending moment so this has come from the analysis now we'll use the design uh, concepts like the design strength we have this neutral axis calculation as we have learned uh, in our RCC that how do you uh, you iterate the neutral axis to make the C C by T ratio as mean as one so the software tries to do that in, in iterations then it calculates the neutral axis depth for this section including the pre uh, priestess components so you have the tendon strands how many strands that you have given in the program so the stresses and then you have the ultimate st uh, the, the stresses that you have the strains it will calculate then you have the force in this tendons then you have the moment resistance calculation then you will arrive at the resistance then you'll compare it with the demand so if you see here it's been under designed here it's fading here so I wanted you wanted to show you that uh, every time uh, you have to check this so you have to go through till the end 
till the moment resistance because there are many number of parameters so you can change the section dimension you can increase the stance so it when it comes ng what you do is you see the ratio so it's it's lacking behind so you can increase the number of strands and try first and if it doesn't fit then you go for the sectional change okay similarly you have negative moment shear force you have okay 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 everything is okay torsional resistance these are all as per the irs code so you have the code clauses you have the formulas given in the code based on the analysis results and the sectional information and the reinforcement information you start calculating this uh, this values and then you do the design do the bending resistance shear resistance torsional stress at construction stage principal stress checks all these checks tendon stress checks so i, I did not select that that's why it's showing zero so it, it does all the the software does all this checks and gives you a ready made uh, excel sheet it's prudent to check uh, each of this calculations manually before submitting to uh, the proof checker or or attaching it to the project report all right uh, so that's how you do the metro wire deck modeling analysis and design so thank you so much i think uh, i've continuously uh, started bombarding with lot of data here so any comments any questions yeah i'll be happy to answer yeah i think uh, we can open the thank you thank you suman a uh, nice presentation and you gave a nice overview of uh, how the entire process is done in midas i mean it was really good uh, now we can open the floor for discussions so those students who have questions kindly raise your hand and uh, we will go one at a time maybe 10 more minutes we can take and we can close yes, um, please raise your hand if you have any questions yes i see somebody who is that okay uh, narayana kumar has a question is it okay is it midas has separate toolbox for metro rail analysis yeah in the metro rail in the moving load analysis you can select india as a standard yeah. and then you will have the vehicles so we can define it from the code metro rail mostly they are customized uh, for that project so you can use a user user defined command and then uh, create the metro rail load the axle loads okay any other questions yeah, from student side particularly you know please feel free because you are all taking now priestess design as well right you know don't don't feel shy you know whatever could be the question so suman was a student like you exactly 7 8 years ago right when did you graduate suman 2015 or 14 yes 15 sir 15 yeah so time flies very quickly right yeah, yeah i have a question couple of questions in fact uh, maybe uh, you know students may pick it up from there you know when you do post tensioning system analysis frictional losses are going to be quite significant right um and also i know here we are doing a simply supported girder so you are not getting any secondary reactions per se uh, but when you go for a continuous system that is again is going to be a big factor right so how does uh, midas uh, how does the modeling of such things are done in uh, midas so uh, regarding the secondary effects mm -hmm. what we do is we uh, create the construction stage analysis so we create the actual construction process we simulate in the software so that time uh, if your structure is a continuous what happens is you have a primary effect and a secondary effect that is coming on because of the continuity that can also be simulated so the tendon which you uh, create so that if it is continuous then you have the hyperstatic effect which is your secondary effect coming into picture 
as you have built in the data inside the software so it uh, uh, it creates that hyperstatic effect in a separate load case which you can use it for the design in your load combinations so that would be considered so. but uh, the, yeah that that can be governing as well sometimes yeah and uh, in terms of like say especially when you go for segmental construction you do start you know tensioning them in stages right again that also probably you're including that uh, stressing sequence as well in the uh, construction stage analysis right yes sir yes i'll show you yeah. one model here sir mm -hmm. yeah this is one continuous structure okay so here you have this balance cantilever fashion construction so the same stage is how it is built in reality the same thing we simulate in the software so same thing we simulate in the software and here whatever the tendons that you see here sir so those are till only those lengths correct so you model all these tendons which are acting like all these uh, tendons which are there in various stages everything has to be manually uh, modeled here yeah so, so as you are doing as you are giving every information to the software the secondary yeah. effects would be captured yeah and in again you know in continuous system like correctly you said you know the temperature and shrinkage issues you know can be quite a bit again you know what kind of again long term effects yes. right creep shrinkage you know relaxation of steel all these things uh, do you explicitly model it in an iterative manner or you consider long term uh, you know or uh, lumped uh, values you know to start with how does midas does it so we do a exact analysis uh, of the okay. of the losses so we calculate the losses so if you see this uh, command in the yeah. tendon property we give the data here to the software yeah. the ultimate strength yield strength the curvature friction factor the wobble friction factor the anchorage slip 6 mm anchorage slip at the end so the tendon data we have given okay. and then we have given the profile as well right right so and also the sectional dimensions so based on that data based on the duration we also give the time dependent material properties it's nothing but your as per ceb fip or astro code you give the how your creep is changing how is your creep coefficient changing i'll show you that see see the creep curve that is there the creep curve with the duration with the duration like 100 days 200 days 1000 days 10000 days so your input property or uh, you know it is calculated automatically by code so you give only few uh, data uh, mm. and then you select this india code as to or those codes these graphs would be uh, built in in the program those would be pulled in and then from there you have the creep coefficients then it uses those so time dependent properties are there you have the tendon properties there profile there and the section is there so it will calculate all the losses first the immediate losses the frictional losses the creep shrinkage losses because of the creep and shrinkage also you'd have the tendon losses so those also it will calculate and also the relaxation of the steel all those things it will calculate the losses and the effective pre stress is been applied to the structure that you can check the tendon primary and then also the secondary effect pre stress the secondary effect of the primary pre stress so those to those results all these things would be coming into different load cases so those you can pull it to your load combinations and go ahead for the design no i, I think this is for the benefit of the students that i am asking and any anyway, one one more question from leo i'll come to that later so you know we have all this you know uh, sophisticated packages but you know we try to insist that you always need to check your results with hand calculations you know how how seriously you know you do that to make sure that your results are correct or within the acceptable engineering you know judgment uh, in your projects very so just often, for the benefit of students that i am uh, asking yeah very often sir very very frequently we do that because 
software is a is kind of a black box so if your input is uh, has some mistakes then the output has mistakes so you you as as you would be sticking to your deadlines what happens is you miss some inputs or you make some errors in the inputs and that might give you a gross error in the design which you you cannot find out so those things you can only uh, find out by doing a quick manual calculation of your results or quickly having a uh, a check of a reactions maybe a self weight reaction that you can quickly calculate from a calculator or you you can prepare a small excel sheet and just calculate the bending moment capacity which is independent of the analysis you know the section you know the pre stress as we used to do in our coursework the same thing we do uh, in the firms as well i trade the neutral axis uh, what if analysis we use we get the bending moment capacity we check it with the software so manual calculations are must so the fundamentals you cannot ignore them so yeah. very crucial so, so that, that was my question as well you know for such a simple model of course your cross sections are changing quite but if you want to do the analysis for a simply supported thing and you know it will be very easy to do in fact uh, hand calculations uh, you know of course you know when your spans are different multiple spans are different and your sections are different it becomes little laborious but uh, you know uh, quickly we can do that using using fundamental concepts that is yes. what i was uh, trying sure, to sure. Uh, get yeah, yeah even we do that as well simply supported mm -hmm. we generally check wl square by 8 though the sectional dimensions are changing it should be somewhere close to that if you are taking mm -hmm. a thicker section conservative side this should be your maximum bending moment right. in the software right. so that's how we cross very good yeah leo uh, one final question from leo uh, how to make sure that the tendons are positioned in correct place such that it comes in concrete sections because you have already mentioned that you model it like a line model so basically is looking at the profile of the tendon how do you exactly give that Though it's a line model, Leo, but you know he's specifying the variations of the profile. I'll let Suman answer this. Yeah, uh, yeah, Leo, that's a good question. Uh, let's see, here, let me. I think I have closed the model. Let me open it. Let me open it. So this is a line model. And these are the tendon profiles that are made. So, how do you arrive at this tendon profiles? Is your question right? So, this is a little uh, iterative process. Simply supported, we already know what is your bending moment. So, before arriving at the profiles, what we do is we delete these profiles first, then run a simple analysis. Then you get a bending moment for the cell fit. Once you get the bending moment for the cell fate or the SIDL combined together as a permanent load, then you have the bending moment. Then you know the jacking jacking force or the jacking stress. So you you know the ultimate stress as 1860. You'll uh, you'll uh, take it as 0.8 percent. I mean I mean 0.8 of that. That is 80 percent of your jacking stress as 80 uh, percent of your uh, yield strength yield stress as your jacking stress. So you got the moment and the force so you divide by that you will get the eccentricity so what we do is we prepare a small excel sheet so you are, you are, what you are asking is a preliminary design that we say just i'll show you that excel if i have i think i have yeah. see uh, so I think it doesn't have those calculations, but yes, the bending moment you know, the jacking force you know, you divide by that, you will get the eccentricity. So you, that's how you lay and prepare your coordinates for the tendon profile. And how many number of tendons? It it is also an iterative process that comes from the experience. And uh, how do you make sure uh, that the tendon passes through your section? That's why you have to freeze the sections first. That's why you have to freeze these sections first. These sections. Once these sections are freezed, how they are changing uh, on the superstructure, you have to know, and then you can keep the tendon uh, 
at this location at the center location and also there are codal guidelines to have a minimum cover distance to this tendon ducts so that's how you finally arrive at the tendons and uh, sometimes the, it it happens that you have designed completely till the end there are some loadings that have changed maybe some load factor was taken incorrectly then then the tendons might not be sufficient then you have to increase the number of tendons that that time you have to define another profile yeah. other coordinates okay thanks nice nice uh, thank you suman uh, surendra dr surendra you have any questions comments before we can uh, also i am I mean, glad to see that you know we try to post, post it in linkedin and all i think several of our old students have also joined i'm good to see that i think you know at this point of time you know i, I mean a lot of students are there chiranjeevi is there he did phd from our place karthik is there he did recently completed his phd uh, from our department i see several names you know hello to everyone i hope all of you are doing well i mean keep in touch uh yeah so in any questions comments yeah amal is there yeah it's, it's good to see this presentation immediately after the lnds for metro train thing this is more practical in the software said and lnd person also mentioned that they have actually used this maya software right uh, apart from that also uh, students can really see them those way they could be a few years down the line given that they have seen one of their own very fellow batchmates or mm. uh, yeah did masters from our iit has so uh, yes Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just taking care of this thing. Thank you, thank you. So, Suman, you know, you should. Uh, we wish you great success in your career, and we want you to be one day CEO of of some very <laughs> reputed company. Or, you know, make a company of such, uh, you know, stature, and come back and recruit our students. That is our request. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sir. It was glad working yeah. with you, sir. I remember all those days. Time flew yeah. away, but uh, yeah. from small temporary campus like but it was very good course i said the curriculum is same like the same rcc and psc that you uh, yeah about. we have but uh, yeah we have uh, you know added some new courses as well but you know as you know our curriculum is designed in a very balanced way so that you get you know mechanics courses some computational aspects plus design aspects but what we realize is you know if you are very strong in analysis and mechanics design is one thing you know that you can really pick it up yes right yes. uh that that was the line of thinking that we had and uh, now we have two more colleagues who will be joining so probably uh, next academic year we will be start introducing some additional electives as well so that is in discussion but pretty much uh, whatever you study you know with little bit of uh, modifications pretty much it is going to be almost 90% it would be same yeah the the one no, which it, helped me a lot was uh, that moment curvature calculation the neutral axis calculations where you have the change of the concrete rate the, those things which we used to do on the lab we used to calculate in excel right, so right those yeah. things those things are uh, very much used in the firms Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm glad you told me that. <laughs> Validating that at least uh, yeah. what whatever we are doing is not a waste of time for the students. <laughs> no, it's yes. not at all. Very useful stuff that we did in IIT Hyderabad. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, so thank really so appreciate it. And your classmate Chirandhi Chiranji was there. I don't know, he's still there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, Chiranji. How are you? Hi, hi. How are you? Where are you right now? I am in South Korea, but sir. South Korea. Wow. Oh, South Korea. My company is also in South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> you might have heard Midas there. Yeah, maybe, but I am mean, not in Seoul. Like I am in Busan. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Both of your classmates, right? Uh, Chiru and Sumon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. There are only six people, right? Uh, oh, at that time, yeah, 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 yeah. And in fact, you know, a lot of uh, people have worked in company. Now, this time, our M Tech strength is almost, uh, I would say, twenty-two or twenty-three. Oh, uh, only structures. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. We were only eight at that time. It's like eight right, members. Right. 
<laughs> so you guys are flag bearers for us you guys have done well so the program is popular and students are joining and we are glad to note that yeah so good <laughs> Yeah, yeah, regarding yeah. the recruitment, sir, recruitment. Yeah, yeah, you can send us the. You can send me some profiles like the resume yeah. series. Yeah. Sure. I'll give a reference. Definitely. Definitely. You know, we have, you know, as usual, placement process in place. Uh, unless you have some specific requirement, then we'll say. But otherwise, you know, uh, generally we request you to register, you know, through placement office. We will request our placement office to get it. Sure, sure. That would be better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, really appreciate it. You know, thank you, Dr. Surendra, for coordinating. And, you know, I should, you know, uh, really thank you for having... accepted this invitation and was willing to give a presentation in a very short notice you know just two three days before i just got hold of suman in linkedin and i just gave him a message you know and he immediately accepted it in spite of his busy commitment and we really appreciate it and uh, thank you very much and you know we would be really we would be really glad to host you in person because you know you are person you have not seen much of our new campus and uh, a lot of things have come along so we welcome you okay yeah thank you so much it's glad to be a part of this presentation right. yeah thank you thank you all right thank so you all please, students for joining yeah, thank you doctor surendra sir uh, chiranjeevi has raised his hand so suman just uh, give us a minute chiran sure, sure. no, no, it's not it's not for the question actually <laughs> Oh, it's for something else. Okay. All right. So if there are no questions. I don't want to take too much of time from Suman. So really appreciate it, Suman. Dog, thank you to Selenarin Society, our student coordinators. You can see our CS is very very active, and we try to you know bring uh, alumni like you and the famous experts. And you know we record and think YouTube also we have uploaded a lot of uh, these very useful videos, and it has become really popular among the structural engineering and civil engineering community. I would like. Like to thank again the student volunteer Dharanjay and his team, CS team, uh, for quickly putting this thing together. Really appreciate it, Dharanjay. Any final words? And we can uh, close the. Like, I will also like to thank uh, like engineer Suman Dhara for this informative seminar. Like I hope all the students also would have been uh, feeling glad and would be very much helpful for these students. Also, Dr. Surya Prakash, uh, Dr. Surendra Sumala, thank you so much sir for guiding us during this seminar. Oh, that was from CS side. Right. Thank, right. thank, thank you. 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 Thank